someone's going to have to have a 10 minute patch Damien where they can take control of the game if they can take control of the game they'll win the game Good point there, Brash. Let's head to Will Taylor for some more around the ground scores. Yeah, quarter time there, um, Damo. And, uh, well, bad news for the Glen Waverley Hawks. Uh, Mitchum, 12 9 81 now Ooh. to Glen Waverley Hawks, 4 3 27. So a nine goal lead um, in that game. As Damo, you can take us away for the third quarter. Indeed, it's the second half from Morton Park as we get back underway. Stevens won the tap, trying to crash his way through. There was Boulder for South Croydon. Eventually, it comes back to Stevens. Kick towards centre wing into the path of Crow. Can he keep it in play? Yes. Yes, he can. Manages to stop from, find the target in Boulder. It went through his hands. The kick was a bit too crude for him. Blackbird have the numbers on the wing. A good tackle affected by King. The umpire's blown the whistle and allowed play to go on. Try to claim the advantage. The umpire will call it back. It'll be a Blackbird free kick into the arms there of James McFarlane. So McFarlane... From centre wing, it was a shocking kick off the boot. That right foot as he tried to wheel around. O'Farrell's hand pass was ill-directed. A good tackle affected on Tui there for South Croydon by a couple of players. That will be a ball up 45 metres out from Blackbird's goal. They're doing the attacking, the bulk of the attacking early in this second half. So Ralph wins the tap. South Croydon have the numbers on ground level. The hand pass comes out into the direction there of Myers. Couldn't quite take it. Now the Burners have the numbers. Hand pass comes back from Curtis. Swung around by McFarlane. Sent it towards full forward. Hand pass came out. A good tackle dumped there for Blackburn was Banfield. And South Croydon could clear onto the outer side. Good tackle affected there by Bunn. Falls to ground level. Kept in play though. It wasn't there from Donnell. The boundary up high was on the spot. And we'll have a throw in right in front of the interchange benches there on that outer side as Blackburn hold on Gribbley to their three point lead. So the umpire brings it back into play now. Clearance will come now through the arms there of Hudson to handball backwards. Picked up there by Daniel King on the right boot. Squeezes a kick up towards the half forward line but to no avail. So another chance there through Faulkner for Blackburn. It was a skew F looking kick. It went straight into the middle of the ground. It was chopped off there by Glenn Strawn. He'll switch the ball out wide, making his teammate work very hard for it as he swings around, kicks it to the hot spot about 20 metres out from goal. Hughes has a back spot and he takes oh. an absolute ripper mark. He judged it perfectly, the big man, and he'll go back and have a shot on goal from about 40 metres out directly in front, shooting for his third. What really good contested mark there by Daniel Hughes. He's working himself into the game very yeah, nicely. In fact, and, and sorry, Brash, it is uh, Jason oh, Eagle. sorry, Jason Eagle. The, the man with the sleeve of what you were so impressed with. He'll come in now, and he leans over the ball, and he kicks it straight over the goal umpire said That is his second goal, and that gives the lead back to the South Croydon Football Club. Bendigo back scoreboard as we cross the three-minute mark of the third term. They are seven goals, 6.48, a three-point lead over Blackburn, who is 6.9.45. One of the hallmarks of Jason Eagle's game today has been his positioning, especially when the ball's coming inside 50 uh, long and fast. I notice on occasions he's been getting goal side and on that occasion he's uh, backed his judgment and read the flight of the ball just so well. So Jason Eagle with his second major for the afternoon, regaining the lead for South Croydon. Of course he kicked eight goals in round one for the Bulldogs as we get back underway in the centre of the ground. Blackburn with the clearance with a hat kick for from O'Farrell. Chance now for South Quarter, racing back while it was Crowell. His hand pass, ill directed and intercepted by Hatton. Through the middle they go. A shot on goal comes from Clay. Set sail towards home. And that sets the home crowd into raptures. And Blackburn regain the lead once again. They move on to 7 9 51, leading South Point at 7 6 48. It's just a game of fluctuation, Brash. Goal for goal. It was, and the captain had a big side in that goal. Really good tackle there by Ben Fraser. We've got the ball loose, hand the ball off. Clay was in the right position to take possession of the ball and slammed it through for a lovely goal. I think this is where our Blackburn can really take control yep. of the game. The coach said they like to play fast footy, so the clearances combined with fast footy can really hurt South Croydon. High throws the ball back up. It was Ralph versus Stevens at the fall of the ball. McFarlane for Blackburn tried to get boot on ball. They scramble a kick though. The doggies up towards the half forward line. It's a bouncing football. It'll go all the way down there. Galings picked the ball up he got wrapped up quickly in a tackle the umpire will come in and bounce it about 40 meters out now from the Blackburn goal line of uh, the South Croydon goal line I should say so the ball up tap one by Eagle into space chance here for the dogs the hand pass comes back eventually to Myers they try and work it out a brilliant tackle affected there by McFarlane for Blackburn and he'll receive the free kick so once again that pressure paying dividends in this game as McFarlane goes across his defensive goal 
Finds an option at full back and the burners oh. can clear. Brilliant smother affected by Donnell. And it forced the turnover and eventually a boundary throw in deep in the four pocket for the Bulldogs. That's almost a game changer. Blackburn on the way out. They keep it in their forward line, the Dogs. Lucky that they dodged the ball there, Blackburn. So the throw in. Donnell with a magnificent smother. Could set up an attack here. Eagle won the tap from the back against Ralph, but Blackburn have the numbers at ground level and they can stream forward once again. Air pass comes from Fagan, in board to O'Farrell, sends a ball hoisted high towards centre half forward, but in front was Liam Cox, and he takes the mark for the Dogs. He looks out wide and finds King on centre wing of the David variety. King sends it towards half forward, a brilliant spoil affected there for Blackburn, forcing it over the line, and a bit of a how do you do there between those two players, that was McCauley with the spoil. So the umpire brings the ball back in. Ralph almost up, went up unattended there. King let the fall of the ball, couldn't quite pick it up. Scrambly kick up towards the Fraser direction. It needs to bounce favourably for him. That was OK. Got the handball to Fagan. Now they're moving their way through the middle of the ground. Oh, that was beautifully picked up there that time by the player in Strawn. Got the handball over the top. There's a few sloppy possessions of getting people in trouble here as O'Farrell got the ball up for Blackburn. Handball backwards. The kick goes up towards the Otten direction. So too there is Matthews. If the ball can sit favourably for him, he's got two doggies on his on his hammer and the two doggies win out too as the handball goes over the top it goes towards a strong direction sits up for him he'll swing on the left inside forward 50 that is a beautiful looking kick over the back of the pack will they be able to have the numbers down there is a marshall couldn't get boot to ball oh. did he get boot to ball fantastic player scrambled through that's a six pointer doggies <laughs> once again they uh move the ball nicely forward damien watson you look like you're in astonishment out there looking oh, at that, that man, crowd a goal. Uh, but a fantastic goal to uh once again put the doggies back in front they are eight goals six playing seven nine fifty one as we cross the grand campbell thanks to choose tap match stats well, the clearances that uh, look going to be important again four apiece so far inside 50 three to two in favor of south Bruin. and uh, of the intercept marks two to one to south Bruin. so a couple of turnovers early in this quarter so once again the lead changes this time in the favor of the dogs and it's stevens who wins the tap out for the bulldogs kick got a soccer off the ground that was at the david variety again chasing after it there myers eventually is picked up by Donnell. chips the pass inboard looking there at the eagle direction he couldn't quite take it great evasion there at the shot on goal doesn't swing back enough only a minor score for the dogs they're pressing 8 7 55 they lead blackburn 7 9 51 on the bendigo back scoreboard Damo, there's a sense of urgency in yep. both sides now oh, but, you no. know the game's right up for grabs here no, no, no. certainly is Paul Bunn will be the designated kicker for the Blackburn footy club from full back again South Croydon have time to set up their zone so Paul Bunn who's been an impressive figure I must say in defense for the Blackburn side as he kicks it out wide at the mark taken backing back Sam McCauley on the halfback flank in front of King they're just trying to compose themselves. We've seen this on a number of occasions this afternoon from Blackburn, trying to slow down possession. The kick was wayward, and eventually the mark, was it taken in the field of play? No, it wasn't. The set trying to claim it, but it'll be a ball in right in front of the South Point and interchange bench here at Morton Park. So the throw in once again, Ralph contesting against Stevens. Stevens won the tap down to Boulder at ground level. Boulder hacks it towards centre half forward, looking there for King. He couldn't quite take it. The umpires picked out a free kick. And it's going the way of South Croydon to the chagrin of the Blackbird supporters. And the free kick, the recipient, will be taken by the doggy skipper at Daniel King. Huge kick for goal this. Oh, yeah. It make the margin 10 points, and I don't think the margin's blown out to more than a couple of goals all day. So you wouldn't want it in anyone else's hands bar Dan King. And he was held off the play, and that was the reason why he has this shot on goal now from 45 metres. Wheels onto the right foot, doesn't quite bring it back enough. It'll be a one behind scored that faded off to the right. So South Croydon again peppering the goals. They move on to 8-8-56. Leading Blackbird 7-9-51. Bendigo Bank scoreboard. 17 point lead to one turn to South at half time over Upper Ferntree Gully in a big lead of nine goals from Mitcham over the Glen Waverley Hawks as Blackburn make their way down towards the wing position through Hatton. Got a handball back inside. Very dangerous football here across the half forward line. We expect the umpire might come in here and bounce it. Hatton goes after it again. Brought to ground and will have a bounce about 50 
55 metres out from the Blackburn goals. The last five minutes, Dan, have seen South Pride take control of it. Oh, certainly a goal is just reward. What they need now. Snap around the body there by Cox to the forward pocket. Bouncing, bouncing football and over the boundary line it goes. So... It'll be out of bounds on the full for Blackburn to bring the ball back in now. Yeah, it appears Bum will be the recipient of the kick deep at the back pocket there for the Panthers. As Bun kicks up towards the Curtis direction, the big man's got a fly standing strong in front though as Mallison gets a little handball off. Now on the on the left boot, kicks a skew if kick up towards the half forward line. David King takes the mark inside forward 50. That's a good lead coming out and taking it is Jason Eagle and he'll have another shot on goal to stretch the lead out here for South Croydon to 11 points as he winds around now on the left boot. He opened up the goal face. He set sail for goal but he pushed it to the right hand side and certainly got a lot of Bronx cheers from the Blackburn faithful as he put that one through for a minor score and on the Bendigo Bank scoreboard as we cross the ten and a half minute mark of this third term it is South Croydon leading at one one straight kick eight nine plays seven nine. I think it might be Locko playing on uh, on Eagle at the moment. Someone needs to give him a chop out because every time Eagle goes near the ball, he's imposing and he just needs a hand. Do you think they need a double team in Brash? No. I no. No, definitely not. But at the moment, South Croydon are enjoying a, a purple patch. They can't put it on the scoreboard. Indeed, as Bum brings it back into play for the Panthers. Looks out wide. It was a well-directed ball. It was pinpoint. And the mark taken on the outer side. So they have the numbers here, Blackburn. As they look to bring it around the boundary line, not much happening in the corridor. A chip pass comes to Fagan, who's had a lot of the football, particularly since quarter time. A chip pass, found the target at the end. The mark taken by Hefo Farrell. Uh, Farrell kicked three goals in the elimination final for Port Melbourne last year against Collingwood in the VFL. Almost single-handedly won that game for the Borough. He kicked towards half Maxi And Max Odden takes the mark. Wheels round onto the left foot. Set sail for home. Has it got the legs? Yes, it does. Blackburn draw level again. They move on to 8-9-57. South pointed with the same scoreline on the Bendigo Bank scoreboard. We're 11 minutes into this third term. Max Odden once again, just when you need someone to impose himself on the game, he just puts it, puts on the afterburners. Lovely kick for goal. Hasn't he been a fantastic recruit for Blackburn? Of course, he spent some time on the Sydney Swans list and he's come to Blackburn this year and he's been fantastic. Yeah, he's certainly an imposing player, Max Otten. A lot of the ball uh, in the first half, but can also be a damaging player as well as the umpire restarts the ball in the middle. It'll be a free kick to Blackburn going the way of Tyler Curtis in the middle of the ground. Gets a little handball away to Fagan up towards the half forward line towards oh. that man again. Max Otten couldn't quite pull down the mark, almost caught one in the head. The umpire said it was play on. Kick goes inside, ball 50. Matthews has a front spot knocked over nicely there by Eddie. Came into the arms there of Myers, and now the doggies will be able to get away. Uh, Myers got the one two handball in the middle of the ground. It was a little bit of a hospital handball, but Curtis, the big man, got the handball away. Blackburn's dreaming towards goal. The kick to the top of the goal square. Guess who? Max Otten comes out and takes a mark. About 10 metres out from goal. I think it might be Fraser. It is. It's Ben Fraser. Sorry. Uh, the big man, they uh, do look alike. He's old, though. One is wearing orange boots. One is wearing white. And Ben, uh, wanting to get into the game, is the man wearing the white boots. And he straightened himself up very, very nicely. From point black range, Ben Fraser. He made the umpire work very hard oh, for it. It was a sloppy kick, but it's gone through the big sticks. It fooled nearly everybody out here at Morton Park. But Ben Fraser gets his first goal on the board. And the lead goes now back to the Blackburn Football Club by one goal. Well, South Croydon had, their, had the first 10 minutes all of a sudden. But in two minutes, Blackburn are back in town, Dan. Oh, and Ben Fraser, of course, we mentioned in the first half, he's had a very quiet first half, but that's what champions do. They come in and out of games, and no better time than the third quarter and the second half to be able to do that. So again, Blackburn, the pendulum swinging in their favour. It's been swinging from one end to the other all afternoon. And the Panthers capitalising, they lead by one straight kick. Ben Fraser with his first major at the afternoon, now getting into the game as we get underway once again from the centre. Stevens won the tap for South Point, and a brilliant tackle affected there by King forces a secondary bounce. I think the dogs at the moment just look a lot more daring than Blackburn despite there being only one goal in it. Well, Blackburn have the momentum in the last couple of minutes. Fagan tried to kick it out of the pack. Again, a scramble. We'll have another stoppage right in the centre of Morton Park. 
It's been a great contest all day, Damo. Absolutely. Hard to pick a winner at the moment, boys. No. Stevens won the tap again at ground level. Boulder couldn't pick it up. Running onto the football there is Myers. He was claimed by Fagan. Dave in. Gave the football away. Now the Panthers on the rebound from 55 metres. Kick towards full forward at the back. Almost held there the mark by Brooker. Coming through there for the south point of Wisconsin. Eventually it comes forward. Back it comes to Crow. They're under pressure. Under immense pressure. Crow got it back again from the back pocket. Kicks towards centre wing. Looking for King at the back. He judges it the better and is played the mark. Did he have enough of it, Brash? Yeah, just enough. So... The, leading, the reigning Chandler medalist, Daniel King, looks towards half forward. Boulder backing back with the fly to the footy. Couldn't quite take the mark. He's in trouble too. As we have a throw in, 75 around for the South Croydon goal. One of the things when the ball came into the full forward line there just a minute ago, Blackburn didn't have someone front and square. If they did, they were away with a goal. The ball once again back into play. It is Stevens to contest at the front for South Point against Curtis. Eventually falls down to ground level. Picked up in the air. Trying to barge his way through was Ferraccio. He couldn't quite take it. Falls to ground level. Bevy of players on top of it and will have a bounce in the end. About 45 metres around for the South Point at goal. They are pressing very gradually. So the ball up. Stephen stayed down and won the tap. A couple of Blackburn players pounce on top of it. And the umpire, I think, has picked out a free kick and it's going the Panthers' way. And they'll clear it from their defensive half. For those of you interested in the Anzac Day clash out at the MCG, it is uh, 25 minutes through the second quarter and it is Collingwood leading by a goal. Uh, sorry, it is Essendon leading by a goal after opening up a six goal lead there in the first term. So. Back to Morton Park as the kick goes up towards the Fraser direction. He's got a wall of doggies to beat him. Stevens over the back of the pack. The big ruckman got the handball away. But Blackburn had the numbers of the fall of the ball. The kick goes on Goldwood over the top. Bouncing, bouncing football. It was wanted for Jake Hammond. He's already kicked two, but over the boundary, over for a brand, uh, a behind, I should say, Damo. The kick coming from Brooker. So, South Croydon, another chance to reload Eddie. Lex to use the far side of the ground. Spots out his teammate in Will Debney. Short passes on again, so they'll do it slowly. Ben Osborne is usually the general who kicks in. He's got options in Cuthbert. Lex to go forward. The mark's been taken out there by Daniel Hughes. So move to fair way up the ground. Kick two goals this afternoon, Hughes. Short passes on. So clean skills are working themselves up toward up. Up further afield here, South Croydon, as the kick there by Marshall over the top in bits and pieces. This has worked out well as the driving ball goes inside forward 50, bouncing football crowds there at the back of the pack. The ball's bouncing over the boundary line and out of bounds, and we'll have a boundary throw in left forward pocket down the South Croydon end. Once again, South Croydon move the ball well from the back line, in the, but can bemoan the fact again that their disposal into the forward line didn't hit a target. Just crossing the 17-minute mark of this all-important third term. The kick out of the pack from kick towards goal. Didn't have enough juice on it. And Blackburn to clear from their defensive half. It was a shocking kick. Went straight down the throat of Descent. There was no direction in that whatsoever. A Descent could chip the pass short. And he finds his intended target there in Daniel Hughes. And he can go back and have a shot from a fair distance out at a fairly acute angle to contend with. They're doing all the hard work at the moment, South Croydon, so a goal here is needed. So Daniel Hughes being named the best player for South Croydon in their opening two games of season 2014. He's currently scored two goals with his name written all over it. He shoots from 45 Lovely metres. Kick. Brilliant looking kick off the boot. The goal umpire didn't have to move very much and that's a team lifter for South Croydon. They draw within a point of Blackburn and the score on the Bendigo Bank scoreboard sees Blackburn 9-10-64 lead by a solitary point. The South Croydon 9-9-63. What a ripper that was. Great kick by Daniel Hughes. Five, two minutes ago, he's up taking the ball on the halfway, half back line, ran the line down the middle to the half forward line to get on the end of that pass. Once again, 
and rewarded with a fantastic goal. He's been sensational all day on the lead, Daniel Hughes. He's kicked three goals, of course, and that's a third of the doggy score. Grant Campbell, thanks to Choose Tap Match Stats. Inside 50s, 9 to 6 in favour of South Croydon. South Croydon have had four more kicks than Blackburn, four more Campbells this quarter. Back to a one point ball game. It is Blackburn leading this one by that one solitary point, 64 plays 63, just waiting for the <laughs> football to return back in from. How do you see Kyle Matthews game? I've, I've seen him, he, he seems to be struggling a bit. He's been a bit quiet today, I think, Kyle Matthews. I think uh, he's been well held. I didn't think that 15 minutes on the sideline helped him out. I think it robbed him of his momentum. He just he seems to be in sixes and sevens and running to all the wrong positions at the moment. That's right. Well, it seems that Doggy Faithful <laughs> may have run off with this goal in celebration after uh, getting back to within one point. So we'll be waiting for another football to make its way onto the field. One of the unique intricacies of local footy, BWS, the ball getting lost at the car park. Well, Take some... Oh, hang, hang on, I've just seen oh, it from back. the left. It certainly was down from that doggy faithful end in the pocket, so no one wanting to relinquish, but uh, eventually mates looking after mates on a day like Anzac Day says give it, give it back and do the right thing, so yes. we'll... Uh, be able to restart this game very shortly almost time on here in the premiership quarter as they call it the third term one point ball game the stage is set Stephen got the knockdown that time against Curtis Blackburn will be able to get this, the spoils here as he goes after it again Curtis kick out towards the Fagan direction ball's got to sit up for him to be able to trap it inside the line on the left boot goes inside forward 50 he was looking for Hudson over the top of his head ball bounces away seen over the boundary line by Debney and will have a boundary throw in one of the things the dogs have done really well this quarter might have changed a bit but early on they broke even with Blackburn in the clearances which they really struggled with in the first half. So Stephen will go up against Ralph the two big men. Stephen knocked down that time go for the safety of the boundary line picked up there by Ward tried to break it two tackles the umpire said he didn't have prior opportunity so he'll hand the football back. I'm telling you there's no clear winner here yet Certainly isn't. Curtis over the top could have nearly given away a free kick, but they've got the numbers here. Blackburn O'Farrell scoops on it, snaps around the body O'Farrell. That is goal and ace so far on the Bendigo back scoreboard. Blackburn stretch their lead to a seven point margin. 10 goals, 10, 70 plays, 9, 9, 63. They've been good at the stoppage. That's his third. O'Farrell just knows when to run into the right places at the right time. He's been in and he's playing in the middle, but he just seems to know to run into the right places to be on the ball then. He's read the play really well today and I think Blackburn in this quarter they've really locked down on that uh, on that Bulldog side but uh, what O'Farrell's been able to do as you mentioned Brass has positioned himself well and he always had eyes for the footy in that situation and the snap kick. Next goal is crucial I reckon. So O'Farrell with his third major maintains the seven point buffer for Blackburn as we head back into the middle. Diver Ruckman won the tap. Matthews trying to sprint clear. His kick was smothered by Stevens. Came off the ground. Mark taken by Fagan fortuitously. Kicks into the pocket the mark taken, or almost taken by Ralph. Coming over to beat it was Hudson, trying to paddle it, trying to keep it in place. Oh, he no! Great evasion! Step around the corner on the outside of the boot. Oh, well, Elsa. The score. So Blackburn, 10 11 71 lead South Point at 9 9 63 at an emotion charge, Morton Park. Up and coming player Sam Hudson showed all the skills there, just not rewarded at the last minute. Osborne's got Cuthbert short, as, as he does King. Lex to go to the skipper. So they're still in their defensive arc, South Croydon. Short passes on. Descent. He might go back to King here. He does now. King now over the top. Put Osborne under a little bit of pressure, but he did have space, Ben. Now swings around on the left boot, drives the ball up towards the wing position, coming over the back and knocking it away there nicely. Blackburn over the boundary line. She goes for a boundary throw in through centre wing position, far side of Morton Park. Who do you reckon would be more satisfied, Dan? Danfield or uh, Damien Franken? I reckon Damien Franken at the moment. Dogs are working so hard all over the ground. So the ball in on centre wing. Stevens wins the tap and robes his own footy, but he's claimed by a couple of Panthers and will have yet another stoppage. Having said that, though, Brash, uh, earlier in the quarter, the Dogs held the ascendancy, right? But Blackburn are finding themselves in that position where a goal here is dangerous for the Bulldogs. Ball yep. up on centre wing. Stevens won the tap. Matthews' kick was smothered. Picking it up eventually was Boulder. He was claimed in the tackle brilliantly there by McCauley. Eventually falls to ground level. Tried to sprint through there was Fagan. And tapped it to his own advantage. Now the burners can stream forward. Kick into the pocket. A driving ball. No one's there at the back. Can it bounce through for a goal? No, it won't. It's deep in the 
the pocket. Good result there for Blackbird. Really good result. They get the, they get a, a stoppage on the on in their forward 50. That was Brooker with the driving kick forwards. Uh, the Panthers in their attacking half. They lead by eight points. As Brash mentioned, a very important stage of this game. Time on in the third term. See if they can gain the ascendancy. Tap one by Ralph at the ruck. And pass eventually driving through his Tui. He was gang tackled and will have a bounce deep inside the Panthers forward line. We've seen that all day, haven't we? The doggies just gang tackling those Blackburn men, pressuring them into making mistakes. Oh, he throws it up, Ralph, over the back of the pack. It was nicely fisted away that time there by Eddie. Got it out of that danger zone, so to speak. Set a half forward. Matthews went in a little bit too crudely. It'll be a free kick, much of the chagrin of the Blackburn faithful is coming through now. He's Myers in the middle of the ground, gets a lovely looking kick out towards the half forward line taken there by Hughes. He has a bounce, swings back around onto the right foot, does Hughes. Helicopter punt style kick towards the forward pocket, bouncing football. He was looking for Eddie, but the ball hit the bound, well, the behind post, I should say, and over she goes for a boundary throw in. So they move that along quite quickly from end to end, South Croydon, as we have seen them done a couple of times already in this term. But that go out of bounds on the Full, did it? Yeah, bounced off the behind post, uh, out of the full. So it'll so be a, okay. Yeah, it'll Continue. be a Blackbird kick. McCauley <laughs> driving up for the bar, couldn't quite take it. Strawn dispossessed. Eventually coming through there was Osborne. Fed the hand pass out. A bit of a fed off too as he swings round onto his right foot. Kick towards half four, but it's all Blackbird. Switch it. Yes, and the mark take it deep in defence. Let's see if the Turtles can switch it. So Blackburn. Currently lead this game by a handy eight points as the ball goes into towards the middle of the ground. A good strong mark taken by Tui. Swing around on the left boot, kick it in towards the middle and out there is uh, Clay. Swing back on his right boot. So when, they, when it looks like they were going to move the ball in quickly, they've just slowed it down a little bit, Blackburn. As the kick goes up towards the half forward line, Faulkner's there. He was at the back of the pack. He might be clever enough to get the handball away. He was tackled. Fagan came in. The umpire said yeah. he cocked one a little bit too high. A touch and go that one, but they have been paying them all day. So Fagan, who I think has been fantastic for Blackburn this afternoon. He has been. He was the only one there, the only player then that wanted the ball. He was the only person that wanted to put his body over the ball, and the umpire rewarded him for it. Lead comes from Fraser. Lead comes from Hudson. Fraser at the back, nicely knocked away by a Thomas Eddy over the boundary line and out of bounds, 20 metres out from the Blackburn goal line as we cross the 26 and a half minute mark of this third quarter. Eight point lead to the Blackburn side. They would really love to go in and be able to get another goal on the board here, but it went straight into the arms of Stephen. Clever footballer Stephen just banged it on his boot, gained a very valuable 40 metres or so out towards the half-back line and over the boundary line it trickles for a boundary throw in. Real, the experience of Grattan Stephen there knew that if he tapped the ball into the corridor there, there was a nestful of Blackburn players there, but did the smart thing and kicked the ball to the... Well, he's been a tireless worker all afternoon, Stevens. He contested in the ruck on that occasion, but it went over his head. Coming through there was Byers, affected the kick, taken by Brooker for Blackbird towards half forward, looking for Ralph, but the kick was a little too crude for his intended target, and it's gone out of the full, so it'll be a Bulldog free kick going the way there of Debney. Goes across his defensive goal, finds his teammate in top, Eddie, who breaks the lines, goes through the corridor, eventually they transfer no. play, it was a shocking kick, a bad option at the end, and Blackburn turned it over 60 metres from their goal. Kick inside, 50, looking there for Fraser, good spoil in the back from Eddie. Pouncing on the football there was Myers, he couldn't quite take it. Hand pass fed out by Hatton, eventually streaming through a snap on goal for Blackbird towards full forward. Ralph was there, he couldn't quite meet it, and it's dribbled through for a minor score. So the Panthers move on to 10-12-72, leading South Croydon 9 9 63 on the Bendigo Bank scoreboard. 27 minutes gone, third term. Osborne goes short, spots up teammate Sam Cuthbert who will create a mini switch out towards the Debney direction. Goes short again, finds Myers. Just underneath the Bendigo Bank scoreboard, might switch the ball back across here to Glenn Strawn, takes the mark, short pass again is on, and now it's with Liam Cox. 
So Cox goes up towards the big position. He popped the ball up. He made his teammate in Anthony Descent work over so hard, but he got the handball back to Strawn. Now on the left boot inside, forward 50. That is a terrific oh, looking low. kick and pulling down. An absolute ripper there is the big forward in Daniel Hughes. Him now on the right boot goes in towards the pocket coming out. There is Eagle. Couldn't quite boundary. hold the grab over the boundary line. It goes for a boundary throw in. And speaking of the boundary, let's cross down to Georgina Carl. Thanks yeah, to Akira Urgent Care. Still really nice conditions down at ground level, but a bit of a northerly breeze has picked up, so that might start to affect the kicking. Throw in deep inside the 50 for South Croydon. Kick trying to crumb onto the football. Could have quite taken oh! the kick out of the pack. It's a goal. I think it's been converted by King. It was brilliant play with the crumbing from the pack from South Croydon, and they draw with it three points of Blackburn. The Panthers 10-12-72. South Point at 10 9 69 Bet they go back scoreboard. That's one against the flow of play there. In the last five or so minutes, Blackburn have really held possession of the ball, unable to put a, put one through the big sticks. But uh, South Croydon there, you just get the sense that they're grinding the Panthers down at the moment. They are. Hard in and under, positioning well around the contest and the rule orders there. Fiving him, it looked like he got the goal. Certainly giving that one to Rob Mallison in the middle of the ground as the siren sounds for three-quarter time and as it has been throughout the whole afternoon, gentlemen, on this Anzac Day in 2014, a close affair we have before us. 10 to 12, 72 is the Blackburn Football Club. South Croydon a 10 at 9 69. It's been close all day. Expect nothing less coming here in the fourth quarter. We'll be back in a moment after these messages with all the important other Anzac Day around the grand scores. What vehicle would you choose for your funeral? An old 1950s classic, just like 